If you're not sure of your surroundings and the people that you have to deal with, whether it be a job in the home, in your personal life, friends, make a stand. And when you make a true stand for what's right, amen, everything else around you will be manifested as to if it is good for you or is it not. Are they a friend or a foe? Anytime trouble comes, the Bible says that when trouble comes, the scripture says that it is good to a certain extent because when the trouble comes, then you can see who is approved or not. When trouble comes into your home and into your life, amen, you can see who is real. You can see where you stand. You can see where the people that stand around you. You can see uh, who you can trust and who you're not because of the way they respond to the troubles that come your way. That's why trouble is good sometimes. Those who you thought were in your corner. Many times when trouble comes, you find out that they're your biggest critics. Or the truth comes out. Trouble comes and somebody thinks that, amen, somebody that was thinking that you thought you were all that and all of a sudden they thought that you were coming down and, and all of a sudden you reap what you sow and all of a sudden their colors come out and they begin to criticize you. That's what you get. And you're looking at them like, I never knew you thought that way. You never would have known except trouble came. And at the same time, those who you thought were your greatest enemy will rise up sometimes in the midst of the storm and stand by you until you're surprised. You never knew they loved you like that. But you would have never known if the trouble hadn't come. I feel the virtue. So understand that it is important that you understand what you believe and you stand on it. And it must be right. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus taught parables. Parable stories, the lessons that pertain to real truth. And he gave different examples, and he would teach parables sometimes to the people, <clears throat> putting it on a level where they can understand. And many times they didn't quite understand the parables, he would break it down. And his disciples asked one time, said, Lord, why do you speak to them in parables? But you make it plain to us, and he politely implied that it is meant for God's people to understand the word of God plainly. The mysteries of the kingdom have been given unto the church. But in Matthew 13, verse 24, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Trying to get into heaven, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like unto a man who had a field, had land, and he went forth and he planted good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man who had a field. And the man wanted he planted good seed. But while men slept, an enemy came in and planted bad seed, wild seed. And he planted it right there by the tares. You know, Paul put it like this. Whenever we go to do good, evil is always present. Everything around you that looks good is not good. And I'm here to tell you that, amen, as you look for the blessings, also look for the hindrance of the enemy that will try to rob you of the blessings. Amen. Then you must also understand in life, that everybody is not your friend. Though we are taught to love all, everybody will not return them. Everybody does not mean your well-being, even though you walk and talk with them every day. And you young people especially, as you grow up and grow into this world, you don't seek mom and dad everywhere you go. You have to learn that the world is not always going to pat you on the back, neither will they uh, lift you up when you're down. But you have to learn to stand strong and realize, amen, that where the good is, there's also the bad. I never forget when I was selling candy in school. I couldn't get anybody to buy anything. So I'd say, I'm going to go sit down on the steps of the people and bow my head like I'm crying. Nobody ever opened the door. That's when I learned. You can't go through life looking for sympathy and pity from people. You still have to do what you have to do, even if they don't understand. 
You can't go through life looking for somebody to pick you up, though we all need a helping hand sometimes, but if it doesn't come, you still have to get up. Because God is able to see us through. And so while Mia slept, the enemy came in. I know this sounds strange, but you will grow up with enemies. <laughs> you will eventually have enemies in your life. In other words, spirits that are people that are moved by spirits that will come forth to hurt you or to hinder you. While me and slept. Now you see why the psalmist said, Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Because God never sleeps nor slumbers. But we sleep sometimes. We go to sleep spiritually and don't realize that the enemy, the devil, while we're sleeping spiritually, he comes in and tries to plant the wrong seed. Amen. That's why the wife said that men should always watch as well as pray. Because the wrong thing can creep into your heart and you don't even know it. It can come from the job. It can come from the loved one. It can come from surroundings. The Bible says if you walk around and you continually hang around a quarrelsome man, that argues all the time, the Bible says you too will become quarrelsome and contentious. You understand what I'm saying? It says bitterness starts in one, but it springs up and defiles what? Many. So you have to be careful that the wrong seed is not planted in your heart while you sleep, while you're not sore, while you're not paying attention. I feel the virtue. Sometimes we say, man, if I hadn't known this, I wouldn't have done that. But you didn't. You were asleep. And the enemy came in. And, and, and right before you, uh, sometimes you find yourself sleeping with the enemy, walking with the enemy, talking with the enemy. The enemy is your so-called best friend, so you thought. But when Mia slept, the enemy came in. And so terrible. Uh, why would you call it an enemy? Because uh, only an enemy would want your bad. Want, your, want the worst for you. Only an enemy will try to hinder you, will lie to you, try to deceive you, smile in your face, amen, but backstab you in your back. Only your enemy will not wish you well. Anybody hear me? Somebody say, why do you keep saying that, Bishop? I'm glad you asked me, because you've got some people that do you like that now, you call them your friends. I'm trying to let you know that only your enemy does that. A friend doesn't put you down. A friend is not always critical. A friend is not always battering. A friend doesn't see your good and then try to corrupt it by putting bad next to it. I feel a virtue. Love doesn't do that. Love is not puffed up. Love does not exalt itself. A friend will not lift themselves up so high and they're going to keep on lifting themselves up until they see you come down. Then they feel good once they score. they belittling you. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. A friend is not going to rejoice because you finally made a mistake. Some of you are surrounded by it and you think it's love. But you sleep. Yeah, the enemy has plenty of seed when you weren't aware. I feel a virtue. I said I feel a virtue. Somebody say, you taking that back, Bishop? I'm going to jack. No. I might take it back. Because you need to understand the difference between love and hate. A friend and an enemy. I feel virtue. Now, <clears throat> some people can become enemies because of who they have befriended. Does that make sense? In other words, we're fine. We were fine until you became friends with people that hate my guts. And you're close to them. Now you become an enemy because of who you have befriended. Why is that? Well, Jesus put it like this. The world hates him. The world is governed by Satan. The world cares nothing for the blood that Jesus shed on Calvary. And so the scripture says, whosoever is a friend of the what? Of the world he is what? The enemy of God because they have befriended his enemy. So how many friends do you have are indeed your enemy because they have befriended people that despise you. People that come against you.
especially in marriages. There's no way you can be friends with somebody that hates your spouse. Always talking about and putting your spouse down. Are you serious? Well, I'm not doing anything to you. No, you're not. You're not doing anything for me either. You sit right there in the midst of all of that. You're not speaking up. You're not standing up. You're not being insulted by what we say about me. The worst thing you consider a relationship is these are my friends. But then how can two walk together except? They're your friends, but not his friends. His friends are not her friends, but they don't respect what you connect to, but yet you cleave to it as a problem. The enemy has played a seat. Anybody hear me? Because your friends are going to tell you what you want to hear. Her friends are going to tell her what she wants to hear. But a real friend will tell you what's right. And the friend of his is not a friend of hers who respect her, who shows that it's a possible friend because they have to make for the relationship and vice versa. Anybody can do. So if you got a friend that hates a friend of yours, then you need to think about it. Amen? Think about it. But now, when me and Slip, the enemy came and so tarried, not just anywhere, but amongst the wheat. The enemy put the bad seed in the midst of a good seed. You ever dealt with a jealous person or a person that was envious? They dropped some on purpose because they were yours? Or they deliberately meant something else? Hello? That's not a friend either, is it? But, watch this. And they went their way. They came and sold tares amongst the wheat and went his way. And went his way. Uh, let me paraphrase that. They came to your house and raised hell and left. They were talking to you on the phone and put all kind of garbage in your ear about your so-called friend that really is a friend and left. Or they gave you wrong information and they misled you purposely and then they left. Left you to deal with it. Just like the devil in it. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tatters also. Oh my God. And sometimes people are so slick and so wise, you don't catch it. And you grow with these spirits, wrong spirits right next to you. Because they're so mingled in in, in, in your lifetime. They're so connected with your lifetime that you didn't even think to look that way. But when the when it, when fruit came forth, the tares also appeared with the fruit. So the servants of the householders came and said unto him, Sir, did not a thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then did the tares come from? And they said, the servants said unto him, he said unto them, my enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, without being that we go and gather them up. The servant, the master said, our enemy has done this. Now, the good fruit grew, and the wild tares grew. Lord, please give me eyes to see. Though I may sleep sometimes in my life, I might not catch everything that is bad for me. I might not see and understand everything and everybody around me. But God, when the time of, of growth comes, please, as these fruits grow, please, God, when I have to make a stand, anoint my eyes that I may recognize the good Amen. from the bad. The master immediately said, I didn't plant that. Oh, my goodness. Can you say you didn't plant it? Did you hear me? Can you say you didn't plan it? The master immediately said, I didn't plant that. 
That's not from me. An enemy did that. How many times have a parent have to tell a child, you didn't get that from me? Huh? You, you didn't get that. That's why I better tell some, some church folks. No, y'all didn't get that from me. 